Hey, it's been a little while since I've done an instructional video uh, and I was a little bit worried for a while because I can't I, I didn't know what I can and, and can't talk about because of what I what I do at work but I guess as long as we don't use their intellectual property that's fine we can use stuff that you can find off of Google uh, and I can give you basic ideas on, on how st stuff works now these videos are for entry level uh, I'm not an actual pilot if you are a pilot don't listen to me or maybe correct me if I have any errors <laughs> and and maybe don't waste your time watching this because if you know what you're doing you know what you're doing this let's just pick a knee board now once you understand what you're doing when you're flying and and whatnot um, oh, this is the forums, Eagle Dynamics forums, which are great to go on for news and whatnot. So, knee boards. Once you figure out how you how to fly and you understand a little bit of your um, aircraft and you're comfortable just moving around, taking off, landing off, doing that kind of thing, knee boards are brilliant. Uh, the default is Shift-K. Now, if you have a look at this, you can kind of understand what's what's going on here and, and you can make some deductions on what it's like in the real world uh, so this is an entry point for this runway that's an entry point this is an entry point this is an entry point um, and if you have a look some of these knee boards as well because you can you can go back and forward through them they'll give you so there, there's the latitude and longitude for it but you know if I was to move forward or move back it'd tell you these waypoints um, what altitudes you need to be at when you hit them in real life there's there's laws that cover these kinds of things so you have to hit them uh, at, a, at a specific height if you're any higher you can get fined if you're any lower you can get fined and if you're at a particular speed you can get fined as well uh, in real life and the reason for this being is because it's unsafe so this is another one so as you can see um, oh look there's an e-board user guide so as you can see there's little loops here for when you're uh, you know if you need to abort a takeoff or you know I, d I don't know how to read these in entirely in their entirety and correctly uh, but I understand enough um, to get me by through DCS so let's see if we can find one that actually has the height so we don't really need it but Okay, so Kneeboard also just has a map as well. When you, I think the default is open bracket, close bracket. I think that's the default. That will cycle through the Kneeboards uh, and you'll get different information on different airfields, uh, sometimes radio stations and whatnot. Uh, it's also good for when you're taking off because you'll be able to see, <coughs> you know, when you, when you load up in a hangar and you're not sure exactly where you are, you can see where you are on the apron uh, or in which um, hangar you're in so yeah look at this I don't know what that is but that's pretty cool if you can add bookmarks so say for instance you're that'll do okay say for instance you spawn in you have no idea what's going on if you use your knee board you can see that um, and you compare it to your map if you can see yourself on the map you can see where you are and obviously the runway number 07 is traveling 07 which is off to the right 25 is traveling um, 250 which is to your left so if you need to take off from 250 that means you need to head towards 07 as you come out of say this hangar here so you know you need to turn left you need to follow it down and when you get to your second right then you can turn right generally when you um, talking to ATC in real life they'll say you know you have to hold short at Tango or or Alpha or whatnot so these are your entry points so when they're talking about um, say this would be you know Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta they'll say you know 
Uh, oh, and it is. So there's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. So they'll say, you know, hold short at Bravo. The reason being is there might be a landing or there might be someone taking off. Um, but that's basically what that is. Uh, and I think the limit on a lot of the servers might be 50 knots on the ground, even though I think real life it's 30 kilometers or something like that. Um, they have a limit and you will get booted if you go too fast and that's obviously, you know, for safety reasons and, and you know, they ban you taking off from taxiways and things um, like that. But these, uh, so that's Kut Kutazi, I can never say them right. Um, so even when you're landing, it's a good idea to have a look uh, and they'll give you the charts and the heights and, and, and those kinds of things uh, in your kneeboard. So the reason they would give you a recommended, like an entry point at, you know, say 3,000 feet is if you've done the landings before in the tutorials, you know that you need to come in it. <coughs> Most of the time it's about a three degree angle. Depending on the aircraft, your angle of attack might be different. And your angle of attack, uh, in a previous video I discussed that, that is your cord line which is if you draw a line from from this side of the wing to that side of the wing like a straight line of, of how of the angle of where it should be going through the air uh, like the nose of your car uh, but in 3D space up down left right you know that kind of thing that's your chord line so when the wind is coming from say bottom to the top there is an angle of attack because this line here is not matching with the direction of the wind. So, say for the uh, Mirage, I think the angle of attack needs to be about 15 degrees. So what that means is you need to be decelerated enough that you're kind of dropping out of the air and you need to have a nose up, but the little uh, terminal velocity indicator, I think that's what it's called. Where am I? What's going on here? I want to go to Google. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Is it vertical? Uh, this little thing here that looks like the airplane with the circle and the line at the left and the line at the top, like a like wings, flight path vector. There it is. Your vector indicator, flight path vector. This thing here. That shows you where your aircraft is expected to go which is quite helpful in the newer aircraft. In the older aircraft you have to kind of work it out manually. Um, obviously not with a pen and paper because your main job is to fly the aircraft. Um, but this thing needs to be at about 3 degrees, which it looks like this one's close to, in the middle of 5 degrees down and um, the horizon line. Horizon should be 0, so it's negative 5s and plus 5s and what not. So, say for instance you're landing the Mirage, I think the angle of attack needs to be about 15. So you're looking at maybe 12 degrees up as you're coming down um, with the power kind of making you fall out of the sky. Uh, now, you might need to double check that because I don't know if that is actually how you land the Mirage. I don't know if it's 15 degrees up or 12 degrees up or, or whatever it is or it's nose level. Uh, but if your angle attack of is, um, uh, if, if you want to land at about 3 degrees, which is the average for most aircraft, uh, then it would give you your landing angle. See this one? This this kind of nose up a little bit. So it could be either taking off or, or this could be landing if the nose needed to be up to land at 3 degrees. It would still be coming in at 3 degrees, but the nose up would be... Um, say, I don't know, 5 degrees up, 10 degrees up. Now, it might be a little bit hard to follow, or I could be explaining this quite well, I don't, I don't actually know, because it's a shotgun lesson, I haven't really sat down and, and thought about it. Um, so, you kind of have to minus your, your 5 degrees down, that you would be getting on your uh, velocity, um, not velocity, vector indicator, flight vector indicator. See how that one's yeah, sitting at about 3 degrees and it's pointing at the start of the um, runway? 
Well, you don't want to be doing that at like Mark 2, because if you're doing Mark 2, that is where your nose is going and you just plow straight into that thing. So you generally, uh, you can kind of get away with three degrees down. Uh, as you can see, this guy's low, he should be higher. Um, for and, and we'll get into that in a second, which is the point of the, the height on your waypoints. So if you need to be three degrees nose down, and you need to have maybe the no well, the three degrees is your velocity vector or your um, v um, vector whatever whatever. But the aircraft needs to land with the nose up. You need to have obviously your nose up, but this little thing still pointing at the start of the runway. Now the Pappy lights are telling him he's too low, so he's not uh, he he's coming in at three degrees, but chances are he's going to hit the dirt before he gets in there. Um, so this is kind of an off configuration. You can still land like this, and to be honest, I do it more often than not. Um, but if you want to land properly, you need to hit the waypoint at a good height, the entry height. Uh, and obviously, if you work out the math, you've got something like... Um, I wonder if I can use anything here. Um, probably not. So, let's do a new bitmap and we'll do some fancy drawing here and that's not going to work what we'll do is you have your ground and you've got your aircraft here and maybe we'll have another demonstration aircraft here now <coughs> this aircraft needs to come in there's a runway here That's your, your crappy runway. Look, it's even got lines on it. That This is generally the path that I do when I land. Um, but, yeah. There's your runway. Look at that. How great's that? Artiste. So, this guy's come in too low. His three degrees. Now, obviously, this is just doing it by eye. His three degrees is aiming here. <coughs> so as he's coming in, maybe nose up or nose flat or even nose down, depending on the aircraft, because when aircraft are built, they don't actually have the manual ready and set to go. It's not completely planned. I mean, they they can do a lot of forward thinking and, and know how the aircraft's going to behave in certain ways, but you still need a test pilot. The test pilot gets in the plane, he flies it, he sees how it behaves, how it feels, and then he writes down the landing procedure. He's the one that goes through and sees how the aircraft actually performs uh, to, I guess, either confirm or correct what's expected from the aircraft. Because as smart as we are, some things you can't really get exactly spot on at the same, you know, at, as, as you're building it. So anyway, this guy's going to hit too short if he's doing three degrees so in this instance he's gonna you know come down he's gonna go oh I'm not gonna make it so then he's gonna correct and he's gonna end up coming this way which is no longer three degrees he's gonna be landing at you know two degrees or, or whatever uh, and in that instance he's probably made adjustments to his um, throttles and thrown himself off which makes for a risky landing whereas this guy here is entered at the right height and at the right distance he starts his descent and he's bang on so he's going to come through at three degrees everything's going to be set perfectly he won't need to adjust his throttles he won't need to adjust his um, all he needs to do is guide it in really and he will have a safe landing but this guy here's got to make adjustments he's got to make corrections same thing if you if you're up here the problem with with being too high or too low is making throttle adjustments changes so if this guy needs to accelerate he might put himself over the maximum um, recommended speed for his landing gear and even the wheels so he's going to cause problems when he hits the when he hits the runway this guy here he's he's going to have problems with speed because as you know you trade energy for height so in order to be where he needs to be 
he's going to dive and he, you know depending whether he goes straight down or, or this way he's going to build up speed so he needs to pull his throttle down which makes for riskier corrections um, and all kinds of odd things so he's going to be um, throwing himself off as well so being too high is no good being too low is good being within a certain um, happy nice little area around here uh, is where you want to be when you're landing so with that don't save my art and DCS is nearly ready to go so with that what we'll do if we just have a quick look at the Hornet DCS landing HUD see modern aircraft um, they're complex to use but you get a lot of handy little things to go with them <coughs> now if you've done the landing tutorial or whatever in the in the Hornet um, it will tell you that this little thing here the E that's that's your angle of attack guide and as long as your velo um, verte whatever it is <laughs> this thing as long as that is inside here your angle of attack is is correct so you kind of want to want to adjust your throttles to make sure that this here is over the aircraft carrier or your runway and this here is inside there so and he's coming in a bit low as well and he would have too low throttle on this one because this is now below five you don't want to come in at below five from my understanding you can get away in most aircraft without reading the manuals if you go for about three degrees um, so that is why height is important that is why distance is important and that is why your uh, velocity or throttle controls are important as well so these are things that are uh, entry level stuff um, and very handy to know and if you'd excuse me I'm gonna go for a bit of a fly thanks for watching